Hey, what's up you guys? It's Avery and welcome back to the channel. Yes, you read the title correctly. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting, operative word, attempting, to read seven books in seven days. So I've done some challenges on my channel before where I try to read as many books as I can in 24 hours, but I've never done anything like this, which is basically me trying to read one book every day for a week. I'll be honest, I'm not confident that I can do this. I haven't been reading as much this year as I did last year and so I thought that this would be a really good way to kind of get back into it, force myself into reading because apparently that's the push that I need. And I got this idea from Chloe Bunny here on booktube. She's one of my favorite booktubers and I watched a video of hers a few days ago where she read seven romance books in seven days and I just thought that's such a fun idea. I kind of want to do it myself and I'm also going to listen to an audiobook during this video which I never do I'm like not an anti audiobook person but I'm just not an audiobook girly but I thought that this might be a good opportunity to listen to an audiobook and kind of try that format out I'm going to vlog throughout the week and then at the end of the video I'm gonna rank all seven books that I read and talk about which ones were my favorite and which ones not so much without further ado let's jump into the vlog I hope you enjoy and literally just wish me luck because like I said I don't feel confident about my abilities to do this but we shall see so today is the first day of my seven books in seven day challenge and I'm starting with The Giver. It's literally only 180 pages or something like that. The only thing is is that like I'm tired. It's 8.15 p.m. but I just got back yesterday from being out of the country so I'm very jet lagged I think and I didn't sleep well last night so Maybe this is a dumb day to do this. And I've read this before, I think. I don't remember anything about reading it. I do remember the movie. And I so I remember how it ends um, and stuff like that. But I really don't remember much about the actual book. So I'm excited to read it and see what I think. So let's get started. A little update. I'm on page 88 of... The Giver. I'm really enjoying it. I really like the writing style. It's like very simple writing, really easy to read. It's a children's book, so that, you know, tracks. But I also just forgot like how interesting the whole story is. Like the whole community is so weird and it's like this very odd, like you don't even want to say dystopia because nobody's unhappy, but it's not a utopia because nobody's happy. Jonas just had his first lesson with The Giver. It's also different than how I remember it. My real memories of this book aren't even the book, they're the movie. And the giver in the movie is kind of intense and like mean in a way. And the giver in the book is not that way. He's just like old and tired and seems kind of sad. But still kind, like he's still kind to Jonas. So I kind of forgot about that. So I read The Giver. Honestly surprised I was able to finish it tonight. I thought it was going to take me a lot longer. You know like the, how the first third of a book, at least for me, always feels like it's the hardest to get into usually because it's, I don't know, you're just still trying to get into it and learn everything about what's going on and then once you get into the plot, like it feels like you fly through it, the last half of it, a lot faster. That's definitely what happened here. The first quarter of the way through took me like an hour, but then the last three quarters took me two hours so it was three hours to read the whole book and so like the first hour was really the first quarter and then I finished the last three quarters in two hours so I just got through it a lot quicker than I thought which was good um because such a good book so good and it's like how did she come up with that that's literally so random like it's so so random but so good it has such a good message about like how you really need pain in order to appreciate beauty and you need pain in order to have love and that like really there's no point in living without both of those things and something Jonas says is he's talking about like what it would be like if the society was living with love and he was like well it would be dangerous to live that way so i just think it's a good really good theme 
in the book is that like yeah it is dangerous to live with love because it means you also have pain but it's much better to live with that than nothing with neutrality such a good book like wow okay i'm gonna go to bed though because i'm tired and my eyes started to like glaze over as i was reading so it was kind of a struggle but i did it hi everyone it is the next day it's monday and i've decided i'm going to cheat a little and finish this book that i have been reading and then took a little break and i'm about halfway through it and so i decided i would try and finish it today maybe i'm really not sure if i'm gonna have the time to finish it today but i'm gonna try and finish it today and it is my oxford year by julia Whelan. Whelan. and i started this a few weeks ago and then kind of took a break and now I'm going to come back to it. I'm like halfway through. I'm not even quite halfway through. But I'm really enjoying it because if you have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I went to Oxford the summer of 2021 and studied abroad there. And it was probably like one of the most fun experiences of my life. And so this is about a woman who goes to Oxford for a year on the Rhodes Scholarship. And she kind of starts up this little flingy fling with one of her professors. But it's not really like, she's a graduate student and he's like a, a TA type thing. He's not really like her professor, but he is teaching her class. So it's probably still kind of frowned upon. But they're both like, we just want this to be a fling because she's only going to be there for a year. And he's like a bad boy and like not looking for anything serious. Anyway, it's really good so far, and I just really love that it's set in Oxford because she talks about different places and doing different things in the city, and I'm like, oop, I did that, and oop, I've been there. So I really am enjoying, like, feeling like I'm back in Oxford as I read it. So, like I said, it's kind of, I don't know if it's, like, cheating with my seven books in seven days because I have, like, started it. I'm not starting it from the beginning, but... I really want to finish it like I don't want to read seven books before I finish it so I'm just gonna count it it's my video and it's my rules and if you have a problem take it up with me in the comments so today is Tuesday the next day and I know I didn't film much yesterday but I did read more of my Oxford year I did not finish it though but I'm a lot closer I'm a lot closer to finishing it so I'm gonna finish it today and then I'm also, I started this audiobook, which I will maybe talk more about later, which is a pretty short audiobook. So I'm also going to try to finish the audiobook today. That way I'll be caught up. I'm going to hopefully finish this like right now. And then I have some errands to run later, which I will probably just do and listen to my audiobook and try and finish that up tonight as well. So that's the plan. So far, my seven books in seven days is going okay i'm a little behind but i have a plan so we're good let's do it so i just finished my oxford year it was really good and it was really unexpected the way the story changed I thought that it was originally just gonna be this like romance rom-com she goes to Europe falls in love with this bad boy professor and like just kind of has a normal romance arc but it actually didn't it kind of had this twist in the middle and then this like really kind of sad thing that they both had to deal with for the rest of the book so it like really changed the vibe of the book but in like a good way in an unexpected way so i'm glad i have my book from yesterday finished now i just need to finish my audiobook which i only have like two hours left on and i'll talk more about that a little bit later so it's the end of the third day and i have yet to talk about the third book so i'm going to rectify that now and tell you about the audiobook i'm listening to it's called i feel bad about my neck and other thoughts on being a woman by nora efron and the audiobook is read by her. So I chose this book because I saw, I think I first heard about it on like Instagram. And it sounded interesting because it's a collection of like essays about being a woman. And it's by Nora Ephron, who I'm a fan of some of her movies. So I figured, you know, it must be good. I'm sure she's a good writer. Also the fact that it is short 
it's like three hours and 50 minutes, which is a great foray into audiobooks for me as a short one. And it's okay. I'm not in love with it. It's just, it's not as relatable as I think it's supposed to be. I think some of it has to do with the fact that it is maybe written for older women. Like, the first story is about, like, women's necks and how you can do all these things to your face to make you look younger and you can dye your hair, but, like, you can't de-age your neck unless you get, like, a surgery for it. And, like, not at the point in my life currently where I'm worried about, like, the way my neck looks. Maybe it's a good cautionary tale for, you know moisturizing and wearing sunscreen. There's a story about purses and how purses are kind of annoying to have as a woman, which I sometimes get, but also like, I don't mind having a purse. A lot of her takes are like very specific to herself. My general opinion on audiobooks so far is that I'm not, I'm not loving it. I like really, I have to force myself to focus when I'm listening to audiobooks because I just will tune out if I'm just listening to something in my ears. Like, I just start to think about other stuff, which I just don't do as much when I'm reading. You know, sometimes you do that. You'll, like, read a whole page and realize you didn't pay attention to any of it because you've been thinking about something else. But, like, it's so much harder with audiobooks. Audiobooks are good for if you are commuting and doing things like that I'm not sure they're actually like the best format for this type of video where I'm trying to read a bunch of books if I'm just at home I don't want to be listening to an audiobook I want to be reading because I'm trying to finish this audiobook but I'm just home so I'm like laying on my couch listening and then I like close my eyes because I'm just like laying trying to soak it all in but then I start to get tired and my mind wanders so like you definitely need to be up and active for audiobooks but also I don't know it's just interesting. It's an interesting way to listen. I have been listening to it like as I walk places or as I do the dishes or clean my apartment. But yeah, that's kind of my third day. I'm going to finish it tonight. So I've successfully, so far guys, I've done three books in three days. That's almost, almost halfway through this challenge. Now I'm a little concerned because I'm going to actually have to read like full books. I just need to find short books to read, like on my shelf that I've been wanting to read that I know I can get through quickly. That's it for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. I just realized I film like all of my clips sitting on this couch, but it's because I spend most of my life sitting on this couch. Big fan of my couch. Ikea. Love you for that. But it is Wednesday. Fourth day of the challenge. I'm on my fourth book. I'm reading We Are the Light by Matthew Quick, who is the author of Silver Linings Playbook, which was apparently a book before it was a movie. This story of how I got this book is actually kind of fun. It's actually not that fun, but it was sent to me by a publisher, which was exciting. It was the first book I've ever been sent by a publisher, but the name of the imprint that sent it to me is called Avid Reader Press. They didn't mention anything in the email about that being a reason why they sent it to me. It's because my channel name is a very avid reader. But I just thought it was like a really fun coincidence that like the first book that I was ever sent was from an imprint called Avid Reader Press, which is it's Simon & Schuster, which is one of the big five publishers. So kind of fun. I'm not feeling confident that I'm going to be able to read this thing today. I'm not really feeling confident about the entire challenge, period. So I do a little bit of dog walking in my free time get a little extra cashy cash. So I'm going to dog walk this dog that lives a bit of a train away from me. So I'm going to take my book on the train and read it on the way there and back. But then I'm going to see a friend later tonight. And so I'll be with her for like an hour or two. And I don't know. I just don't know if I, I don't like, don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this book today, but it's a pretty easy read, which is nice. It's about this man named Lucas and he lives in this town called Majestic, Pennsylvania and the town is dealing with the aftermath of a really tragic shooting in their town that kills I think like 18 people in a movie theater and the main character's wife is one of the victims and basically the main character has like the secret but it's not really a secret he's telling his therapist that he is seeing his wife as an angel so basically his wife visits him every night in the form of an angel 
with like these big wings on her back. It seems pretty obvious that it's like him going through this like psychotic break. It doesn't, it's not like a supernatural book where like she's actually an angel coming to see him. It's like, you know that this is him having this crazy trauma response. I am struggling a little bit, but I'm going to try and persist, but I'm not sure that this challenge is gonna happen. Hey you guys, what's up, how are you? It is Thursday, which is the fifth day of my seven days, which is kind of crazy when I think about it. Here's a little bit of an update. So still reading We Are The Light. Um, I think that's a lie actually. I'm not currently reading it. I haven't read it today yet, but I haven't finished it. Did not finish it last night. I'm like a little over halfway through it. But I decided to give another audiobook a try because I just think I knew I needed to do some audiobooks in order to get the challenge in. So I'm currently listening to Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham, who if you don't know who Lauren Graham is, let's get cultured and watch some Gilmore Girls because she plays Lorelai in Gilmore Girls. I'm such a big fan of Gilmore Girls. I've seen it so many times. And Lauren Graham just seems like such a great genuine funny gal every time I like see clips of her and stuff and so this is a memoir from her about Gilmore Girls a little bit but it doesn't really focus on Gilmore Girls it's more about like her experience as an actor and about her experiences when she was young and being in high school and college and then finally getting on Gilmore Girls and just lots of different fun stories about being an actress and I'm enjoying it. I think I'm enjoying it a lot more than the last audiobook. I started it this morning on my way to the gym and I listened to it as I was working out, which felt kind of psycho to like be listening to an audiobook instead of like pump up music while you're working out, but not this week, not with this challenge. So it is the end of the day Thursday. I just had to like remember what day of the week it was. It's the end of Thursday. I finished the audiobook by Lauren Graham and I was doing a lot of walking today so I pretty much like listened to it all like while I was walking and going places and so it was like a really easy way to get through it. I haven't read any more of We Are The Light. It's late. It's like almost 11 and I'm gonna read some of it before I go to bed. I'm tired but I need to like read it so that I'm back on track but I'm not super worried about it like if I don't finish it tonight because I'm gonna have a lot of time tomorrow yeah so I'm not like super worried about it but the challenge is challenging I definitely feel like the audiobooks are kind of like a, like I'm cheating I know a lot of people don't feel that way about audiobooks in my head like I don't think of audiobooks as reading like I know a lot of people do I mean obviously you're not reading with your eyes but like it's just not the way that I consume literature and so it's kind of weird for me to be like oh like yeah I read this book but I actually listened to it. I'm gonna go to bed do a little reading before I go to sleep and then see what I'm gonna read tomorrow. Surprise surprise I'm on my couch. So today is Friday which means it is the second to last day of the challenge. Eek! I have to still finish We Are The Light I am close to being done. That's not really true. I'm maybe like two thirds of the way through it. I'm gonna finish it today. I'm really annoyed though because I have a half day for work today and so I wanted, my plan was to go to Central Park and read and get some sun and spend a lot of time there reading and hopefully finish the book there. But we are having another air quality situation happening today. It's not as bad as it was if you guys saw in the news, but it's still not the best to be outside in. So I'm not trying to just go be outside for hours and hours. Um, so that kind of sucks. So I just have to stay inside and read, which I've been doing a lot of. I just had an idea. Maybe I'll go to the, li the public library and read in the reading room, which is so pretty. Okay, I might do that because I need to go that way anyway to go to the library, the Stavros Niarchos library, to go pick up a book that I potentially want to read for the challenge and I need to drop one off. So I need to go out and do that anyway so I might actually do that so I can kind of get out of the house and go read somewhere else that's not outdoors. So I think that's going to be my plan. You guys just saw that formulate in my head.
here on where? My couch. I just finished We Are the Light by Matthew Quick. It is 11 o'clock on Friday and I have read five books. Tomorrow is the seventh day so I have to read two books by the end of tomorrow which I feel confident about because I went to the library and got some shorter books today that I think will be hopefully easy for me to read. I might start one tonight but it's also 11 o'clock so I don't know. The first one is The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway which is a classic that I've been wanting to read and just haven't but it's very short. It's like 120 pages but it's also like a small book so there there's not even like that many words on a page so it's probably more like 90 pages and then the other one is the pearl by John Steinbeck this one's also short it's like 80 pages and then the last one which is one that's been on my TBR for a little while is what we talk about when we talk about love by Raymond Carver and these are a bunch of stories so we'll see I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do I think I definitely want to read The Old Man in the Sea, and then I'm just not sure what I want to read for the second one. But that's kind of the plan. I'm coming to you guys from a location that is not my couch. Surprise, surprise. And I'm in my bedroom. And the reason why I'm in my bedroom, because I don't really spend much time in my bedroom when I'm not going to bed, is because this is the only room with a window in my entire apartment that gets sunlight because my power has been out all day long which is really fun. It is almost 8 o'clock p.m. and I've had no power all day. I've been gone most of the day so it's been fine but now I'm waiting for someone to come fix my power. The electrician said he was going to be here two hours ago and now supposedly he's 30 minutes away. I don't know. Haven't been reading as much as I would be if I had a normally functioning home. I'm kind of annoyed because I feel like I had high hopes for today being the last day that I was going to get my reading in and now I feel like this has squashed it a little bit but I will give you some updates. The first is that I started The Old Man in the Sea so boring like I'm not going to finish it. I got 50 pages in and I was like I cannot read about a man sitting in a boat fishing the entire book and I was 50 pages in. I even like flipped through to like page 100 to see if things picked up. Nope still just him in a boat with a fish like I'm really really good I know a lot of people love it and I you know know it's supposed to have a lot of meaning but if it wasn't so much about the actual like technical fishing parts of the book then I think it'd be fine like I can handle him being alone with his thoughts and him thinking about things and whatever but it's like so much of the book is him talking about like fishing and reeling in this line and cutting the line and then doing something and I'm like I don't even know I can't even visualize what's going on because I don't know what it's talking about because I don't fish. Gave up on that one. I really have no desire to finish it. So then I decided to start reading Another one that I thought would hook me a little better, which is what we talk about when we talk about love. Also, a weird book. They're like these short stories, but they're really random short stories. Like, I thought they were going to be like more focused on love, romantic love, but I'm just not really connecting to the first few stories that I've read. So, I've now started The Pearl by Steinbeck. Um, this one, I think, maybe has more potential. I'm still not feeling incredibly confident about it, but I think it could be better. I'm also, I think, just growing weary of reading. I've just been reading a lot the past few days, which obviously I love to read, but I do love to read at my own pace. And I think I'm trying to choose like these shorter books so that I can finish them on time instead of reading like a book that I really want to read. Really hope that the electrician guy comes and fixes my apartment and I'm just not feeling excited about any of these final books. I've read five and like the prospect of trying to read two more books in the next day is like I don't I don't want to do it. I just don't. I just feel like my power going out was kind of my last straw. I have it back on as you can see but it took forever for the electrician to get here and then when he got here 
it was like all sorts of craziness. I think he had no idea what was going on. He was like pulling wires out and they were doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And then finally, like an hour and a half later, they got my power back on. And then by that time, it's like late and I'm tired and I have to make dinner. And I just, I, I think I'm done. I think I tapped out the challenge. I read five books in seven days. I really wish that I had done seven and seven, but like, that's a lot, okay? That's a lot for me. I don't know why I'm like feeling guilty about it when I put these constraints on this video, like for no reason. I'm like torturing myself for no reason. I don't need to read seven books in seven days. It's just like for the video. I can still title the video that and everyone will be none the wiser until this clip right now. So get wrecked. As you just watched from all the footage, I read five books in seven days, which obviously was not the plan, but I just, by the end, was so tired, and then that last day when my power went out, it was like truly the final straw, and I just couldn't read anymore, slash I didn't have any books short enough that were interesting enough that I wanted to read. So I just did five in seven days, sue me, but that's what happened. So I'm going to do a quick ranking of all the books I read and a little description of each of them to round off this video. I'll try to keep it quick because this video is already pretty long. Coming in at number five, I have I Feel Bad About My Neck and Other Thoughts on Being a Woman by Nora Ephron. So this was an audiobook that I listened to. It's a collection of essays about different things about being a woman. And I just, I think it could be that because it was published in 2006 I didn't relate to some of the things that she talked about slash I feel like some of it was very specific to her like she had a whole story about cookbooks and I like to cook but I don't really own cookbooks I think maybe most you know people my age don't have cookbooks we just use the internet so it was hard sometimes to relate to what she was saying slash I think like she just had these kind of very niche opinions about things so I gave it three stars some of it was entertaining it wasn't horrible but I just didn't love it coming in at number four I have talking as fast as I can from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls by Lauren Graham who I love she I love Gilmore Girls and she's such a fun lady all of her interviews I love so I enjoyed this audiobook I thought it was interesting hearing about how she came to be on Gilmore Girls and she talked about acting school and just it was like a memoir and and parts of it were really interesting. The parts that focused on Gilmore Girls were more the parts I was interested in because I love that show. But this was definitely fun and you know she's pretty witty and funny so I enjoyed this one as well. And I don't know what it means that the two that are audiobooks that I listened to were in the bottom two because I don't know I just don't think I'm an audiobook girl. Coming in at number three I have We Are the Light by Matthew Quick. I gave this book four stars. This is a book following a man after a tragic shooting in a small town and his wife is one of the victims and he was there and he actually stopped the person who was shooting and it kind of follows him and like his trauma that he's dealing with and these kind of delusions that he's having after this really tragic Thing that happened. One way that he tries to heal the community is by befriending the shooter's brother who is an 18 year old and is struggling you know in the wake of this as well. It just follows kind of the whole community's efforts to heal and come back together and the ending was really good. It had some surprises in it but it was a nice ending like that didn't I mean the whole story is very sad but it didn't leave you feeling horrible at the end of the book. And I liked it. I thought it was interesting. I've never read anything like it before, so it was very unique. Second place, we have My Oxford Year by Julia Whalen. I also gave this four stars. I really enjoyed this book because, as I talked about, I studied at Oxford, so it was fun reading about this girl going to Oxford and having these fun experiences. It also has romance in it, but it doesn't follow any popular contemporary romance tropes, which I liked. Um, it was very surprising and honestly at the end it kind of took this turn and got really like emotional and like this thing happens that just kind of deepens the story a lot more and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good and yeah I gave that one four stars too. And then coming in at number one I have The Giver by Lois Lowry. 
This book is, I mean, there's obviously a reason. It's such a classic. It's such an interesting concept, such a cool world. It's such a short book, which is fun. You can get through it really quickly. I read it in like three hours and it just really draws you in once you kind of get into it and you're just so intrigued by like what's going on and what's going to happen. I think it's kind of like a perfect book in that it's this really cool concept. It's short, it's really simple, but it like gets everything across. Enough happens to make it feel like it's a nice well-rounded story. It leaves on a bit of a cliffhanger. I know there are more in the series. I've never read those. Maybe I will. So those are the five books I read. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and really seeing me struggle through this video. I'm not gonna act like it was pretty, you know? I think that I push myself but I had a fun time it was fun being able to read a bunch of books kind of all in one period of time even though it was a little stressful if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me in the future comment down below and tell me if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them thanks again for watching and I will see you in my next video peace